When a highly advanced extraterrestrial society comes to educate an Earthman, there must be a pretty good reason for it. This is the story of Billy Meyer, known worldwide for the best UFO photographs. What's not so well known is that Billy is a writer and poet. Billy has been writing books since 1975, and he has written more than 80 books covering every aspect of human existence. A scholar, academic, and fierce defender of the truth, Billy's dissertation of the truth is entitled Teaching of the Truth, Teaching of the Creation Energy, Teaching of Life, and is presented to us in the German language through the many books he has written. But how did it all begin? Sit back and relax while we find out who is Billy Meyer. My name is Eduard Albert Meyer, genannt werde ich aber rund um die Welt einfach Billy. Den Namen habe ich erhalten in äh, Teheran, als ich auf der Walze war und äh, seither ist mir dieser Name geblieben. Geboren wurde ich in Bülach, in einem kleinen Weil draußen in äh, Niederflachs und äh, das Städtchen, das war damals noch recht klein, hat sich in der Zwischenzeit zu einer kleinen Stadt gemausert mit äh, rund 16.000 Einwohnern und äh, es gehört zum Kanton Zürich hier in der Schweiz. Edward Albert Meyer was born in this house on his grandmother's farm in Bulach, Switzerland, on the 3rd of February, 1937. He was the second child of Julius and Bertha Meyer. Julius worked as a shoemaker in several shoe factories in the Zurich area. With his growing family, Julius was soon unable to support them on a shoemaker's income alone and started working for the town of Bulach as a forest worker. Bertha cared for the children and looked after the household. Julius and Bertha would eventually have a total of seven children. In the spring of 1944, when Edward was seven years old, he began elementary school. However, two years earlier, he had already begun his formal education with a highly evolved human from another planet. Als, als ich äh, das Fahrt kennenlernte, das erste Mal sah, da war ich äh, ungefähr äh, fünf Jahre alt und äh, mein Befinden, das war eigentlich ganz äh, so wie es immer war, einfach neugierig, aber äh, keine Angst in mir gefühlt und äh, es ist eigentlich ganz normal, wie wenn ich mit einem anderen Menschen zusammenkomme hier von der Erde. Und äh, die Gefühle bleiben sich gleich und äh, es ist nichts zu sagen darüber, dass äh, irgendwelche Ängste entstanden wären oder, äh, oder sonst Erregungen, die mich äh, außer Fassung gebracht hätten oder sonst irgendwas. At the age of five, Edward began experiencing something strange, although it seemed familiar to him. He began to perceive a voice in his head along with strange symbols that he was unable to decipher. Over time, Edward began to make sense of these symbols and recognized that it was a language that he was unable to understand at that time. Periodically, this symbol language and the voice would appear in his consciousness and encourage him to learn to reply to the messages. Edward took on this task very seriously and learned how to concentrate his thoughts and direct them to the now familiar voice in his head. Then, one day, the now familiar voice and strange symbols encouraged him to go to a meadow in the forest. After an hour's walk through the forest, he came to the edge where it opened to a large meadow. Edward looked up into the sky and saw a pear-shaped metal object which slowly and completely noiselessly glided down and landed on the ground.
In the upper part of the pear-shaped craft, a hatch opened and a platform slid out of the hatch. A very old man stepped onto the platform and it floated down and hovered a few inches above the ground. The old man motioned with his hand to step onto the platform, which Edward did. The platform noiselessly rose from the ground and floated up to the hatch. The old man entered the ship and Edward followed the old man inside. The hatch closed and the ship rose up. During further contacts with this old man, Edward learned that his name was Svath. Svath stayed in contact with Edward, both physically and telepathically, for 11 years from 1942 to 1953. Svath taught him many things, including taking him on trips into the past and into the future, so that he could experience and learn things for himself. Was mich Svat gelehrt hat, das sind eigentlich äh, Dinge, die rein auf die Geisteslehre und auf die Mission bezogen sind, äh, die ich dann später äh, übernehmen sollte, um äh, die Lehre des Geistes, die Lehre des Lebens, die Lehre der Wahrheit zu bringen. Als Svat äh, gestorben ist, anfangs der 50er Jahre, äh, hat sich bei mir dann äh, ein, äh, eine weibliche Stimme gemeldet. Also ich habe das als weibliche Stimme empfunden. Und äh, kurz darauf ist dann auch eine junge Frau erschienen namens Asket, die dann mit mir Kontakt aufgenommen hat. Und diese Kontakte haben dann wiederum elf Jahre lang gedauert, wie diejenigen äh, mit Svat. On February 3rd, 1953, when Billy was 16 years old, Svat said his work with him was complete and that it was a great honor for him to be able to teach him for the past 11 years. Svat said goodbye and shortly thereafter, a new, young, female voice entered into his consciousness. She telepathically greeted him and introduced herself as Oskit. For the next three years, Oskit would teach Billy telepathically, and on his birthday in 1956, Billy and Oskit would finally meet in person. Billy's contacts with Oscott would continue for 11 years. Mit Oscott bin ich dann auch durch die Gegend gereist und äh, konnte auch verschiedene Vergangenheitsreisen äh, mit ihr äh, machen und äh, auch Zukunftsreisen. Aber über die Zukunftsreisen möchte ich nicht sprechen. Das äh, sind Dinge, die niemanden etwas angehen. By the time Billy Meyer was 27 years old, he already had 22 years of education and training from Svath and Oskett. We know very little about this preparatory period in Billy's life. Much of it has remained private. Beginning in 1964, Billy entered a period of 11 years where no contacts took place. This was his time to consider everything he had learned and to plan for the future. Unfortunately, in August of 1964, 
Billy was involved in a bus accident while traveling in Turkey, where he lost his left arm. Meinen Arm habe ich verloren in Iskenderun in der uh, Südtürkei. Da bin ich in einem Autobus drin gesessen, der aus dem Dorf rausgefahren ist. Als uns entgegen ein anderer Autobus kam, dessen Fahrer betrunken war und äh, uns rannte. Mich hat es aus dem äh, Fenster rausgeworfen mit dem linken Arm und äh, den hat es äh, derart zertrümmert und zerquetscht, dass er äh, wegoperiert werden musste. Und äh, diese Geschichte mit diesem Arm, die hat man mir bereits in den 50er Jahren durch Asket äh, erklärt, dass das geschehen wird. Und äh, dass ich daraus äh, sehr viel lernen werde, was ich sonst anderweitig nicht lernen würde. Und äh, ein Monat bevor der Unfall dann passiert ist, bin ich noch in Griechenland gewesen, in äh, Saloniki. Und da ist ein Mann mit zwei Frauen an den Strand runtergekommen. Und dieser Mann hatte den linken Arm weg. Und äh, da ist mir wieder in den Sinn gekommen, was ich einfach beiseite geschoben hatte, seit den 50er Jahren aus meinem Gedächtnis verbannt hatte, sozusagen, oder in mein Gedächtnis verbannt hatte, dass jetzt die Zeit kommt, äh, zu der äh, ich meinen Arm verlieren werde. Und äh, das war eine kurze Episode am Strand drunten und äh, nachher hatte ich das einfach wieder aus dem Gedächtnis gestrichen oder vergraben. Und einen Monat später geschah es dann am 3. August 1964 in äh, Iskenderun. Äh, die Asket die hat mir gesagt, ich werde Dinge lernen dadurch in Bezug auf äh, die Selbstbeherrschung sowie äh, in Bezug auf den Umgang mit meinen eigenen äh, Gedanken und Gefühlen und äh, in Bezug auf meine eigene Psychologie und so weiter und so fort. Und das hat sich dann tatsächlich auch so ergeben. Ich habe auch nie äh, irgendwelche Probleme gehabt dadurch, dass ich äh, meinen Arm verloren habe. Denn als es geschehen ist, dann habe ich das einfach akzeptiert. Es hat mir keine äh, Probleme äh, gegeben, keine Probleme gemacht und so weiter. Sondern ich habe es einfach so akzeptiert, wie es äh, sich zugetragen hat. In 1975, a group of highly evolved human beings began contacting Billy. These human beings are from a planet called Era in a star system called Pliaren. Therefore, these people are known as Pliaren. A female Pliaren by the name of Simyaze first contacted Billy on January 28, 1975. Unlike his previous contacts with Svath and Asket, Many of these contacts were made public by way of written contact reports that are a transcript of their conversation. As of the making of this video, there are 833 contact reports publicly available. In addition to the contact reports, Billy was allowed to take photographs of their spaceships, which are called beam ships by the Pliaren. Most of these photographs were taken between 1975 and 1980, before personal computers became widely available in 1982. 
Because of the high quality and quantity of his UFO photographs, Billy became a worldwide UFO sensation. One of the first investigators to examine Billy's photographs was Lieutenant Colonel Wendell Stevens. Wendell conducted a thorough, multi-year investigation and published two books on his findings entitled UFO Contact from the Pleiades. Wendell also later published four volumes of the contact reports entitled Message from the Pleiades, Volumes 1 through 4. Gary Kinder published his investigation in a book called Light Years in 1987, and Guido Musburger published a book called And Still They Fly in 2004. The contacts with the Pleiaren that began with Semyazi in 1975 are still ongoing today, which means this period of contact with the Pleiaren has lasted 48 years. Together with Svath and Askat, this brings Billy's total contact period to 70 years as of February 2023. Without a doubt, Billy's UFO photographs are the best in the world. However, you might wonder, did Billy really need all of this education and training to take photographs? Well, the answer is no. The purpose of his 70 years of contact with extraterrestrials was to educate, prepare, and assist him as a writer to author a profound discourse collectively entitled, Teaching of the Truth, Teaching of the Creation Energy, Teaching of Life. Billy has written more than 80 books covering a wide range of topics. Many of his books are deeply spiritual and cover topics such as meditation, consciousness, and life and death. The last 50 years of Billy's life have been dedicated to writing, a fact that many people are unaware of. Billy Meyer isn't a ufologist, guru, or someone seeking fame and fortune. He is a normal human being with extraordinary experiences. He, along with his extraterrestrial friends and advisors, have delivered a profound series of teachings on the meaning of life, the human experience, and the path towards knowledge, wisdom, peace, and love. His writings are his legacy, and he will continue to write until his time on earth is done.